You start running out of food. You start running out of money. Amen. You start getting calls from the bill collector. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe, I, maybe I'm taking it too far. No, preach. You'll start praying like God intended on you praying. Come on. You'll quit praying like a TV preacher. Come on. Come on. Here, God. <laughs> You'll quit being all cute and elegant, Amen. and you'll start getting down to business with the Lord. Come on, you better God's preach. not impressed with your big words. Yeah. God's not impressed with your eloquent speech. Come on, come on. God is not impressed with anything we have to offer other than a hunger and a thirst. Come on. Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness Come on. where they shall be filled. Lord, fill us up tonight. Lord, I've been half full. Lord, I, I've been uh, a quarter full. Lord, I want to be all the way full through Christ Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap tonight. So they got out there and they were good and hungry. They got a little upset. Amen. Sometimes you got to be mad when you go in that prayer closet. <laughs> I'm mad at God. Amen. I didn't say that. That's right. You no, might put that on there. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be good and thirsty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to be fed up. Yes. Have you ever been so aggravated, so agitated, so disappointed that you just had to go pray? That's the kind of prayer when you go in there and you have to get yourself together before you open your mouth. I'm going to tell you what I told one of my children recently. Think about what you say before it comes out of your mouth hole. Because once it comes out, you're responsible for it. I certainly didn't think I'd ever be telling anybody that. <laughs> when I was younger, I had what they used to call fresh mouth. My mouth was ready to pop at any minute. And I, I, if I had a safety on it, it was malfunction. I was always popping off. But you certainly want to choose your words wisely when you go into your prayer closet. Go in there, man. Go in there aggravated. Go in there disgusted. But you've got to make sure before you start talking, you turn all of that anger. You turn all of that uh, uh, aggravation towards the devil, towards the enemy, towards the source of the one that's messing your life up. Amen? Don't ever take it out on God. Don't ever take it out on God. Don't ever take it out on God's people. We're not even supposed to take it out on the ones that do us wrong. Amen? That's why sometimes you need a little pause before you start talking. Amen? But it's good to get hungry. It's good to get aggravated. It's good to be thirsty. Water never tastes so good when you've been thirsting for a while. Amen? That's when you really enjoy it. And the children of Israel got hungry and God gave them manna. He supplied. They had no means of eating other than God the supplier. They had no way of drinking the Bible said that he sent manna in the morning and then in the evening he sent quail on the ground. They didn't have to really hunt, did they? They didn't know how to hunt because God brought it right to them. If you're truly that hungry and call on the Lord, he'll bring it right to you. Amen. He knows how to deliver. He knows how to meet your need. He knows where you are and he knows how to get it there. Amen. And then there was another time they were thirsty. Mm -hmm. And they came to Moses and they mm -hmm. murmured against him. Now you shouldn't murmur against the man of God mm -hmm. or the woman of God. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't murmur against God. But take your need to the Lord. Yes. Take your petition to the Lord. Yes. We can't lose our cool because the Lord doesn't lose his cool. Right. Jesus was so humble. The Bible said that they led him to that cross like a lamb to the slaughter. The only difference is he knew where he was going. Amen. He submitted himself. He surrendered. And these little light afflictions we go through that the Apostle Paul talks about. We don't need to be like uh, Esau. Esau was hungry and sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Amen. To Jacob. Because he got hungry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to get hungry. Mm -hmm. Stay saved. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. Sometimes you're going to get thirsty. Uh -huh. Stay saved. Uh -huh. Sometimes you're not going to have any money. Uh -huh. Stay saved. Uh -huh. Sometimes you're going to get sick yeah. and you're going to stay sick and it's going to be sick for a while. Stay saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because God is faithful. Yeah. God will deliver you. Yeah. God will bring you out. Yeah. The Bible said once you've suffered a little while. Uh -huh. See, we forget about that little while. <laughs> that little. That don't preach up on Main Street right there. <laughs> that won't work right there. You hear me? It won't put that on radio. Once you've suffered a little while, yeah. you're supposed to suffer a little bit. Yes. Sometimes you're going to have trouble. Mm -hmm. I was walking through my dining room today, and my foot was reintroduced to one of my dining room chairs. <laughs> I didn't say a word. I remember when I used to scream or moan when I got hurt. Now I just take it like a man. I know nobody cares. Nobody's going to ice it for me. Just move on. Take a pause and move on. But it didn't feel good. You're going to get sick sometimes, sicker than a dog. You're going to feel real bad sometimes. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're 65 years old. Sometimes you're going to feel like somebody tied you to the bed in the morning when that alarm clock goes off. Come on. You'll try to move, but nothing will move. Mm -hmm. It'll be temporary uh, comatose. <laughs> and sometimes you're going to go through some big things. Yes. Amen? Amen. You're going to get bad news. Mm -hmm. You're going to be disappointed. But trust in God. Amen. Keep your faith in God. Amen. Nobody had more trouble than David. Nobody. Jesus. Nobody went through the things that David went through. And uh, David trusted in the Lord. When everybody else left David, the Bible said he encouraged himself mm -hmm. in the Lord. Okay. Amen. Amen. You've got to make sure that you've got enough of the Lord that you don't need anybody else to pump you up. Come on. I said, you better make sure you've got enough of the Word of God in Jesus. you. You better make sure you've been praying in the Spirit, speaking in tongues. You better make sure that you've been sowing to righteousness. Mm -hmm. You better make sure you've had your mind on the Lord mm -hmm. and you've been praying right because you never know what tomorrow holds. Amen. 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 But God is your supply. Yes, he is. God is your source. Yes. God is the one that's going to do great things and mighty things. Yes. He can correct every wrong. Yes. Amen. Yes. He can heal every sickness. Yes. He can heal every disease. Yes. That's why we trust in him. Yes. Come on, give him some praise tonight. Amen. Glory to God. So we need the Lord. We need Him bad. Amen. Amen. We need Him for everything. Mm -hmm. We just sang that song, Jesus Strong. You would think that if somebody was diagnosed with a tumor and went and followed all of the protocol of the doctors, that it's going to get better. But sometimes it doesn't. When Charlotte was in the hospital, she went from one thing to the next. They were, uh, she went in there for one thing, and then they said uh, her kidneys was the big issue. Then they said her heart was the big issue. Then they, they just kept moving around. They just tried to put everything they could on her. And she escaped death. She was up here preaching Sunday and said they had a tube in her throat. They had a ventilator. That was more than a tube. That was what they call life support. Jesus. Well, you know how Charlotte is. They said, when we take this out, the poor little thing ain't going to be able to talk. She's sitting there looking at me with that ventilator, and she's rolling her eyes. <laughs> she asked me, did you think I was going to die? I said, well, according to the doctors, you should have died five or six times. And you're going to get bad news sometimes. Trust me, doctors are not there to increase your faith. Right. Doctors don't quote scripture. Amen. They're scared to death to quote scripture. Amen. A lot of them don't believe, and the ones that believe are afraid to believe openly. Amen? So you better be like Charlotte and make sure you've been serving the Lord. Make sure you have a connection. Make sure you have a uh, a relationship. Yes. Make sure you have an agreement yeah. with the Lord. Yeah. I've got that blessed hope. 
If anything happens, I know the Lord's got me. Amen. If anything happens, I know the Lord is going to protect me. The Bible said that his eyes are on the righteous and his ear is open to hear their cry. Call on him. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful God. And he is a wonderful supply. Yes, he is. We know him as our Savior. Don't we? Are there any saved folks in here tonight? We know him as our deliverer. He delivered us from sin. He delivered us of the wrong thought process. He created in us a clean heart and, and renewed a new mind in us. Amen? We know him as a, a healer. We know him. He was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquity. Mm. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. We know Him, don't we? But we need to know Him every day as